Hey everybody. Welcome in. My glue gun is hot, honey. <laughs> I'm actually gonna turn the music down just a little bit. You might not be able to hear me over that. Give me two seconds, I'll be right back. That's a little bit better. Oh, hey. I see you too, welcome in. This is something really fun for us, and I hope you're excited. This is our free class to our whole community on how to craft a power wand. I have a couple of examples here, and they're totally different examples of what I wanna tell you is, what you're gonna make is gonna be perfect for you and what you need. Welcome in, by the way. Um, anybody new to Sage Goddess or to classes? A lot of familiar faces in the feed. Hi, Rochelle. Hi, Samantha. Hi, Dorothy and Debbie and Lydia and Jan and Jill. Anybody new to SG? I just want to welcome you. <laughs> Sienna's here. Auntie Athena's very happy that you're joining us tonight. I know, because it's late where you are, Sienna, and I'm so happy you're here. So if you're new or new-ish, <laughs> Deanna Franco's not new, I just want to say welcome. We're so happy to have you. Um, if you're totally new, welcome in. Hopefully you won't feel new for very long. I am passionate about a lot of things, my friends, but one of the things I'm super passionate about is um, making wands and I've been making wands for more than 20 years this one is um, 15 years old now this one she's getting loose honey we get loose as we get older <laughs> um, this one I made right at the start of the pandemic um alongside you guys too and like i said this one you can tell the difference between me and sg sg this is crafted by team sg and it's a little more um not my not quite my style but i like to show you different styles because yours is going to be totally unique to you and what i want to encourage you to do a lot of you had the set of tools that came with the little crafting set that we had at sage goddess and that is a perfect place to begin. That came with stones for all the chakras and a really beautiful clear quartz generator. Um, I wanna share with you the wand I'm gonna be working with today. I love it, you got your kids working with you. Let me just tell you, this is a totally kid-friendly zone. So little ones <laughs> who are here, we're so happy to have you with us. We really, really are. Um, because you guys, um, it's not too early for anyone to make a craft, to make a tool. And it could be something that you have with you for the rest of your life. It really could. So I'm super excited that some of you have brought your littles with you. This particular um, branch I found on the beach in the Caribbean. I'm gonna show it to you because I wanna inspire you I've been saving it um, for two and a half years. I know, it's been sitting in my crafting drawer. And you might go, well, what the heck, Athena? Why would you save that? But if you look closely, it's etched. I found this um, in the water, a couple feet down and it had been so worn by water over time that it has almost like light coats on it. Do you see it? I don't know, Zoe agreed with me. She was like, that's a pretty magical stick. <laughs> um, so I've been holding on to it for a really long time. Let me go back to this camera, um, right? Do you see the little etchings and markings and how neat they are? Those are all made by water on that wood. So I rescued it, stuck it in my suitcase, brought it home. And it feels like a language on there. 
and I, what I have to tell you is, it it's very soothing to touch. It's completely smooth, which I love. So that's what I'm working with. I love it. Lala says her stick is 50 plus years old. Amy's had her stick for five years. I'm sure this is driftwood of a kind, but the etchings and markings on it and the energy of the day, it was like such a happy day when I found it. And you know, like all that stuff kind of stays with you. So let me tell you the intention. Can you hear me okay over the music? I just wanna make sure. Let me tell you the intention for today because I want you to start to breathe into the space. The difference between sacred crafting and just crafting crafting, there's only one difference and the difference is intention. When we do sacred crafting, we breathe into a purpose for this tool. And I believe that that purpose stays with the tool for the rest of the time that you have it. I really do. So I want you to, <laughs> you have a big stick, <laughs> I bet you do. I want you to take just a moment and I want you to close your eyes maybe. And I want you to focus on an intention for your wand that you're making with me today. And I want you to completely let go of any expectations of what this should be or needs to be. This is just for you. And I'll tell you why I designed this workshop and why I'm holding this workshop with you right now and why I'm doing this for free for our whole community. A lot of you have incredible staffs and wands and sticks that you've collected. And the difference between a stick and a wand is that we terminate it. What I mean by terminate is we take a quartz point, whether it has a rough end or a flat end, and we attach it to our staff. Quartz is the highest vibrational mineral on the planet. And when you add it to wood, it makes this piece of wood into a transmitter so that it can send and receive energy. Does that make sense? And we're doing this ahead of summer solstice. Do you know when summer solstice is? Pop quiz time. Summer solstice is coming up June 20th. And that is the turn in the Northern Hemisphere from spring to summer. Now, if you're in Australia, New Zealand, South America, you guys are flippy floppy from us in the Northern Hemisphere, right? Like Sienna and Kaz tonight. And so you guys are turning the opposite direction so you're turning toward winter so this can be your power wand hi zoe how are you you want to come craft with me come on in i have two sticks zoe you want to come do the thing with me if you want to you're more than welcome to come in zoe is such a good crafter um thank you amber i really appreciate that <laughs> so yeah so anyway on December 2021, 20, you guys are gonna turn, or, or I should say, you're turning toward what we will be turning toward on December 2021 20, in a few weeks. So you guys are turning toward winter and we're turning toward summertime here in the Northern Hemisphere. So whatever season you're turning toward, this is going to be your power staff for the season ahead. Whether that's winter and rest. Oh, she's coming in. <laughs> There's another, I'm gonna go get Zoe some tools in just a second once I go through everything that we need together. Come on in, I've got my glue cooking. I'm gonna put it between us over here. It's always fun when Zoe joins me live, especially because some of you have your beloveds with you and I have so many um, stones and tools. Um, do you want your own or you wanna help me with mine? I don't know, I think you should help me with mine. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be a joint um, effort. Okay. okay, so what are we doing She's here? got this. What are we doing here? So, we are making a power staff, a power wand. Mm -hmm. And you see how one end is really flat? I cut it flat mm -hmm. for that one, and then one end is not. But it kind of fits that. Oh, okay. Perfectly, you see? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's kind of what we're doing, a double terminated quartz wand. I've got all kinds of ribbons and all kinds of stones laid out here, you see? So let me show you guys what's cooking over here. In your tools, for this craft, if you got the tools, they like your pants, by the way. Aren't they cute? Mm -hmm. Amazon for the win. 
Um, in your tools, you got stones for each of the chakras, right? From your root to your sacral, your solar, your heart. We gave you a rhodonite for your heart chakra. You got something for your throat and third eye. And then you got something for your crown and to add for the chakras, right? What I would like to suggest is if there's anything else you want to go grab from your personal stash, you and you, if you got something in your crystal drawer collection you want to go grab real quick, you're welcome to do that. Just to random that. Yeah. Yep. Just go take a look and I'm see. Not something. I know, she's, got, she's inspired. She's going to go check and see what she's got. And if you want to take a minute to go into your craft closet or craft cabinet now, when it comes to ribbons, we gave you some sari ribbons, but I'll tell you, I like to use um, gift wrap ribbons that I'm not using right now. Things like this would be really good. I have things like this in my craft drawer, so I go through and go, hmm, I need something green, <laughs> and kind of pull it apart. So you may want to take a minute now just to go through your craft supply drawer. You've got stuff. And see if there's something that you're like, oh, I should definitely be using that today for my wand, right? Um, you can do all one color if you want. You can do seven chakras if you want. You can do no stones. But just rub your wand with oils. We did give you a little bit of um, moss in your tools. And we did give you some clear quartz chipstones in your tools. And we did give you some Manipura perfume, which is for your solar plexus to empower you. So the first thing I wanna do to get us started, because this is a sacred craft. Yeah, get wine, you know, this is, I'm here for you. This is your time, we're just hanging out. I want you to enjoy this process. I want you to have fun. I don't want you to overthink it. The most beautiful tools are created when we're not trying. And you can't make a mistake. What did you choose? Oh, um, blue tiger's eye. Totally. And Herkimer diamond. diamond. I think it's It's an celestial Herkimer diamond. It's beautiful. Ooh, that would be, you want to see if that fits on one of those ends? Because that would be beautiful on there while she's doing that. It's going to send a little smoke your way. I want you to take a deep breath right here and just let go of anything that's stressing you out. You know what I mean? This is your time, your place, your space. And I want you to really tap into your emotions. How are you feeling? And if you are stressed or anxious for any reason, I want you to just call all of your energy into this moment. Again, nothing to do here except relax and have a good time there's no pressure there's no this is arts and crafts oh it's perfect <laughs> it's so perfect she went and grabbed like the absolute perfect quartz termination for that one i bet you this is gonna yeah i bet you this is gonna end up being your wand well, I think we should add that when we get to the third eye because I have some other stones laid out here, so I want you to also work with these. You want to come around here so you can reach that? So what I tend to do, just to show you, I tend to put a quartz point on the end, and then I tend to do all of the chakras. So a crown chakra stone and a purple ribbon, a third eye chakra stone and a dark blue ribbon, a throat chakra stone and a light blue ribbon, a heart chakra stone and a green ribbon, all the way along. And Zoe would tell you, this hangs over the doorway over here. Mm -hmm. It does. In my crystal room. So it's kind of like when I you- I think I remember making one of those. You made it with me. Yeah. You helped. And so when you walk through my crystal room, you actually have to walk through this <laughs> to get through it. It's like, I see you. So if you want to do the whole enchilada, you can do that, right? Your ascendant is your rising sign, Allison Ling. Yeah. I call it how you show up to the party. <laughs> She's, um, she is, uh, what is your rising sign again? She is uh, yeah. Leo rising. Yeah. You're the Scorpio moon. You're Scorpio moon, and I'm Libra rising. Right. And then Pisces. And then Pisces sun. 
Okay, so we're gonna take a little bit of this Manipura perfume if you have your tools. And more than a little bit. <laughs> this has all good stuff in it to activate your solar plexus. So a little bit at your third eye for what you know, a little bit at your wrist for what you do, and a little bit at your ankles to bless your steps. Would you like some? You smell it. Did you see that, Shimon? It's an acquired taste, darling. <laughs> me, I'm like, let me stick it up my nose. <laughs> Actually, and, and while we're at it, now that I've stuck it up my nose, um, just a little bit down the wall. Right, wood loves oil, doesn't it? Those of you who are woodworkers, you know this. Wood loves essential oils. It receives it, it holds it, it really does. So do sari ribbons, because they're made of silk, right? So sari ribbons love your oils too. So if you're gonna be working with sari, <laughs> sorry, not sari. Yeah, um, we have a source for sari ribbons directly in India, but Etsy is your good retail source because there's quite a few places on Etsy that have really beautiful um, sari ribbons. This is not a ribbon. This is um, this is a piece of my mom's mm -hmm. favorite shirt. I recognize that. Yeah. She snuggled both these babies in this shirt uh, many times. She has two of them. She, has, she had two of these shirts because both of the kids said it was their favorite shirt, so she went and bought another one. So um, I'm tying a little bit of my mom's energy to my wand today. Yeah. So this is um, called Manipura, which is the Sanskrit word for the solar plexus chakra. Because this is a power wand. And the Manipura, the solar plexus, is your energy center of power. But you can dedicate this wand to your heart chakra. You can dedicate this wand to your third eye chakra. You can like I said, I'm just here to guide you and support you and inspire you, and then whatever you create is ultimately gonna be kind of exactly what you need it to be. The inspiration for this, by the way, came from, I think it's called Enchanted, Enchanted or Enchanted Living Magazine. There's this magazine, y'all will know what it's called. One of you will come up with the name of it. I can't remember, but I subscribe to it. We subscribe to it at SG. And it, it's a seasonal magazine inspired by Enchanted, ways of living and um, they did a whole little article on power staffs and the fairy the enchanted fairy realms and so I sent it to Claire and our team and I said I think we should make power wands before the summer solstice and so that's why this class is happening for you yeah enchanted living I really recommend subscribing to that some of you love magazines and if you're like me I love magazines um, but Enchanted Living is the most magical magazine that I subscribe to, and it includes poetry and photography, and um, I save every issue for scrapbooking and for making vision boards. My students know all about it. Yeah, so it's a really super fun magazine, <laughs> and if you uh, haven't subscribed to it yet, you should. So yes, Petra Milanzi, nice to meet you. This wand, if you terminate this wand with quartz, it can be used to open and close circles, activate grids, everything that you need a magical wand to be. Because ultimately, if you think about it, every wand that we use for opening and closing grids is just a terminated wand, right? I use selenite for that, so you don't have to use cords. You could also, also terminate it with selenite, and it would be also very effective, right? Isn't that cool? So yeah, and which chakra is for a new job? Solar plexus and heart, new beginnings, right? Empowering you, stepping into a new opportunity. So I would do solar plexus and heart if you're opening the doorway to something new. That would be very powerful. Okay, well look, I'm melting my glue onto my hand, which is not quite what you wanna do. I'm gonna put the glue stick Mom, over here. talk about cutting up t-shirts? You could cut up t-shirts, that's ultimately what this, this is. This is the one I'm cutting later. Oh, she, she wants to do a little workshop for you guys on cutting 
clothes, t-shirts and sweatshirts. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to learn it and then have you teach it, remember? Oh, yeah. Cutting clothes. So if you guys are interested in learning how to cut up your t-shirts and sweatshirts, like off the shoulder and kind of different techniques, this one is going to be learning how. And then she wants to teach you how to do that. So stay tuned for that. It's a little different than what I was thinking, which was cutting up grandma's shirt for our um, crafting today, but also very important. Okay, you guys feel ready, set, go? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that'll be fun. I bought the scissors you need for cutting up clothing, so if any of you are interested in that, that'll be a fun little Zoe-inspired workshop. Okay, so what we wanna do now, next, Okay, well, I'll get started and you come back. Oh, okay, cool. Um, yeah, because you have a tutor. Okay, so what I want you to do is make sure that you have set your intention. Um, how will you work with this tool? You know, Petra was talking about opening and closing circles, right? Um, maybe yours is going to be to send and receive energy. Maybe your wand is going to be just a reminder to you that you're strong enough to face the challenges of your life, right? That you have the gifts and tools and abilities that you need to persevere and be strong and succeed in your life. So take just a moment, hold your wand or wood or stick or whatever you've got with both hands. And I just want you to mindfully send that energy into the wood itself. And so mine is a long awaited staff of power and strength and so because your left hand is your feminine and your right hand is your masculine I'm sending both the feminine of my strength which is nurturing and um, heart healing and heart opening and heart expanding and I'm sending the masculine of my strength with my right hand into this tool which is all about um, perseverance and direction and decisiveness and holding both edges of that. Is it your courage staff, Beth? I love it. Thank you for that, Mama Minecrafter. Okay, do you wanna set your intentions and send your energy in? Not into the glue, but into the staff. <laughs> yeah, I did that. Might as well. Yeah. I don't really have any. We'll set one now. You have to set an intention, it's a sacred tool. No pressure. some watermelon <laughs> fancy a little energy drink cheers. for everyone today cheers Jen is gonna be Jen's is gonna be a protection staff Lena's is for creativity which is a beautiful intention again ahead of this season which is all about expansion creativity growth right okay so there we are so we've anointed we've set the intention the first step is we terminate, okay? I'm making this one. Well, that's like one version of it. We're doing more of this size today. Um, is it okay if I attach your crystal or do you want to do it? You can do it. Okay. Um, I totally feel called and inspired to work with Zoe's crystal. I like this one. I almost feel like I like that one too. Do you want it on this end or do you want it on the flat end like this? Flat end. Yeah. I think you're right. Check out her crystal, by the way. <laughs> it's an celestial. It's got a portal on it. I have a better one. Though. Well, this one's pretty darn good, cutie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have the little fluorite little little winged heart that we brought you a couple weeks ago. That was from the um, the little gem set we sent you. So I'm going to attach this first crystal for ancient wisdom, power, and strength. And when you're terminating a wand, what I'm going to tell you is this. Attach it, but let it kind of float and land. The rule for me when I'm terminating wands is don't force anything. Because the crystal will find its easiest resting place. And the easiest resting place is also going to be where it needs to land to lay beautifully on your altar or wherever you ultimately lay this. 
I'm using a glue gun. You can use E6000. It's just going to take a little longer to dry. So it's totally up to you. A lot of times when I'm doing wand crafting, I like to use a glue gun because it's like hot. It's like a stick it and go <laughs> versus a stick it and leave it and wait and hope and a blow. And... Okay. Now on the other end of our wand, isn't that interesting how that wants to sit in there? Whoa, I didn't think that would be the case, but look at it, Zoe. Yeah. Isn't that cool? I had a totally other crystal waiting for this. I'm going with it because it feels really right. So again, the, the best way to terminate a wand, let the wand choose. The wand will choose. Put the crystal on there. Don't force it. <laughs> stick it and go. It's a stick it and go. It's not a stick it and hope. And it will sit right where it wants to be. So that wants to sit that way. And then put it on and let it sit. Look how that totally found its place. Do you see it? Not the original piece I chose. But what I love is these are both multi-terminated and in their own ways it's perfect right oh i love that laura <laughs> i love that thank you for joining us yeah go get your glue guns i'm going real slow honey i'm going slow you take your time and go get your glue guns so now that we're terminating here's what i want to say my glue is colored by the way yeah i'm just gonna Thing. It's um the I get glitter glue sticks, but my my backup glue is not. Um, her backup glue uh has otherwise plans. My backup glue melted, but it's gonna be okay. But here's what I'm gonna tell you: I'm wrapping ribbons around every part of this wand, so you're not gonna see my glue. Looks like a like a roof house. It's lucky glue. This is not lucky. Yeah. Yeah, so I would recommend using the crystals I sent you. My intention with the kit, just so you know, I swear there's so many things on the floor around me. Mixed in. My intention with the kit is that you would use your apophyllite on one end and your quartz point on the other. These came with your kit. It's just that my wand had other plans, so I'm gonna end up saving these for other crafts. <laughs> okay yeah yeah it's interesting moon patrol I that hasn't been my experience I uh, most of my wands are made with um, a glue gun and I I've been lucky that they haven't fallen off but it could just be that I'm not using them you know really roughly either so I haven't had any trouble with glue guns but a lot of people are like you and prefer e6000 and so that's why I'm saying it's totally up to you if you want to use a glue gun or e6000 so the apophyllite is this one. It looks like a little castle. And apophyllite's really cool, you guys. It's an ascension stone. It raises your vibration, but differently than quartz. So quartz, which is this stone right here, um, is stronger, it's magnifying, and it expands energy, and it's programmable. This is apophyllite, this little pyramid right here with the flat top. This one's pointed, this one's flat. Apophyllite is an ascension stone that, that speeds up your spiritual development. So they're both important, but I think it'd be really cool for you to include both on your wand. The Apophyllite kind of looks like the pyramids from the Maya. It does kind of <laughs> look like a Mayan pyramid. You're totally right. Now, here's what I'm going to tell you to do. If you want to do this the way I do it, and I, like I said, I've been doing this for 100 years, but you do you. So anything I tell you, you're like, I don't like that. Who cares? Throw it out the window. Do it your way. This is just me guiding you, okay? Um, before I decorate my wand, after I terminate it, I sit it down. And I'll tell you why. On a flat surface, like really flat. Because you got to figure out where top and bottom are. Okay? What you don't want to do is put all your crystals on your wand and find out that you don't know where top and bottom are. So, well, but I'm trying to get it on a real flat surface. 
So it's looking like top over here is where this little doodad is, is sticking out. And then I'm going to decorate this surface along here. Does that make sense? You don't want to decorate it here and then find out your wand isn't going to lay right. So you got to figure out how your wand is going to lay naturally. Surface here. Let me let me do it this way. Here, let me have this. I know. Actually, that could be flat. Yeah, that's yeah. Flat. Actually, that's really good. Um, well, what is E six thousand glue? E six thousand glue is a type of glue that glues anything to anything, including and metals to stone. So this is... Sonia asked, what if, you, what if you have a walking stick? Walking stick is good too. Just figure out what your top and bottom are going to be. Yeah, I'm still feeling like this is top. Definitely. Give me one second. I just want to set this on a proper flat surface. This is the top where this little dude is sticking out. This is where it's going to lay. So crystals that go all along the surface are going to be on the top. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, she's leaving, but she's oh, coming back. Bit. She's taking a break. Okay. Bye. Do you know where your top is and where your bottom is? <laughs> okay. Feels really good, actually. So it's properly weighted, and I've got my angles and my directions. Now, my rule is, when I'm, when I'm making a wand or a staff like this, I like to put a finger's width of distance between each stone, okay? And that's because I like to leave room for a ribbon. You see? So then I would put a stone here. Then leave room for ribbon. Does that make sense? And then you go and you go and you go. If you're only attaching a couple of ribbons, then you can put your crystals right next to each other. Oh my goodness, I love it. Sonia's staff is a five and a half foot walking staff. So it's more along the lines of this, right? Which again, you can put all the crystals together at the top and then leave lots of room at the bottom. Team SG put um, additional sticks and staffs and then wrapped it with twine. So if you have a longer tool, you can absolutely use this as a walking stick. Okay, are you ready? Let's get back to the beginning. You're gonna see me blow on my wand a lot because um, your breath, your saliva, your tears, your blood, but we're not using our blood today. <laughs> um, these are these carry your life force, right? Your breath, like if you're ever out in nature and you want to send a blessing to a tree, for example, your breath is a blessing because your breath carries your life force code. Okay? Um, you can use your saliva to put a blessing, right? If you're crying, your tears are a blessing. So we have to learn that these are, these are what we call object links. They carry your very unique life force. And so that's why your tears are valuable, your saliva is valuable, your breath is valuable. Nature receives it as a gift, okay? So I'm just gonna blow my breath across. And then I'm gonna look for, I'm gonna feel into with my hand right where the next crystal needs to go and don't for me this is not a visual process this is I feel into this and so the first crystal down needs to go right where my thumb is right now there's like a little place a little space right so now I'm gonna come over here I've got a lot of different root chakra options and I want to start with the root 
and I'm feeling like I'm feeling like I want to do more natural crystals on this wand as opposed to carved and polished nothing against carved and polished but I'm just feeling that the natural stones are gonna take the cake today so I have this natural um, ruby or not ruby garnet stone and I love garnet for grounding so I'm going to make sure it's a finger width part it is and I'm going to glue my garnet now whatever you have we give you shungite in your kit that should be your grounding stone your root chakra and as I'm placing it I'm just setting the intention that this stone will represent grounding strength and connection to the earth and then again using life force energy to infuse that with my own with my own energy and then a full finger width down and then feeling into where the next stone should go now in your kit we gave you a natural piece of I believe this is carnelian or is a fire opal Either or fire opal. Fire opal, which is perfect. So I'm using my fire opal from the kit. You can totally add bells. Bells would be so beautiful. So I feel where this one needs to go. And I'm gonna attach my opal right here. And there's fire opal for transformation. And again, just let it fall. Don't push it or force it because it will go exactly where it needs to go to remain well balanced. If you try to force a stone on a wand, later on you may find that it's out of balance. Just let it sit. <laughs> let it sit. See that? There's the opal. Doesn't that feel right? Nice and natural, not super polished, not super fancy, you know? As much as I've been working with gemstones all my life, I was telling my team the first crystal I ever got, I was seven years old. That's 40, almost 42 years now ago. And um, we were at a tourist shop on a little family road trip and you know, they had those little bins that you could fill up the little bag for three bucks or whatever. It was probably a dollar at the time. And I tried to get all the purple stones. <laughs> Won't surprise you, right? Into my bag. So amethyst was my first stone I ever held in my hands in this lifetime. But it was a rough little piece of amethyst. And um, so there is something still for me, even though I think... Polished tones are beautiful. There's still something for me about natural. So no, Kathy Leon, this is a chakra placement. Meaning, if you're not sure what the chakras are, I wrote a book on it that you can get on Amazon. But the chakras are your energy centers and they go from root to crown. And I gave you stones to represent each one of the chakras. I gave you apophyllite for your soul star. Uh, lipidolite for your crown, labradorite for your third eye, aquamarine for your throat, rhodonite for your heart, golden labradorite for your solar plexus, fire opal for your sacral chakra, I give you shungite for your root, and Tibetan quartz for your earth star chakra. Yeah. So we're kind of going in that order, but again, you can, Kathy, you can totally choose to make this any way you want. Yeah. There is some kind of interference on the screen tonight, Bonnie, but Hopefully it's not too much of a distraction. I'm not sure where it's coming from. Except maybe there's some spirits here with us that want to participate. Uh -huh. Okay. So now, finger width down. And then feeling where you want that solar plexus stone. For me, this piece of brucite was calling. I sent you golden labradorite. And I'm kind of feeling into, I'm just looking at different stones that I pulled. I'm feeling like that brucite. Brucite is um, from Pakistan and it's really strong for confidence and inner courage and strength. So I'm gonna place my brucite there. 
a lot of you have brucite because we've had it at Sage Goddess so many times over the years. So you could also put Golden Healer here. You could put Citrine here. Again, place it, but let it fall. Don't force it. Let it find its own way. Just make sure if you're doing it the way I'm doing it that you leave room for your ribbons. Right? It goes wherever you want it to go, Lisa. I recommend terminating your wand with a pophilite on one end, but you can totally choose to use that as one of your soul star stones too. So there's no... The nice thing about today, you guys, you cannot screw this up. You're not going to make a mistake. This is going to be exactly what it needs to be for you and your path and your purpose. Now, finger width down and then feel into where does your heart chakra stone need to go. Kind of fun, right? Yeah, and don't over polish your wand. I didn't clean mine at all. Um, I'm putting a, a piece of epidote for my heart chakra stone but we sent you a piece of rhodonite, which would be beautiful too. So whatever you choose to work with, I'm just letting it sit and settle. And again, I'm not using my life force to dry it. I'm using my life force to bless it and set my intention. Yeah, your soul star stone in this particular kit is the um, Apophyllite. But other soul star stones, um, I consider morganite, honestly, a soul star stone. I do. So there's others, too, that you could work with if you wanted to use an alternate. And then one finger width down, feel into where the throat chakra stone needs to go. We gave you aquamarine for your throat, or your, yeah, your throat chakra. Um, I'm going to use aquamarine, but I picked a natural piece out of my collection for for mine. So, and again, just setting it down and letting it settle. Not forcing, just letting it be. It's coming along. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then finger width down. Choose your third eye stone. I'm working with titanium aura quartz. We gave you um, labradorite, a big piece of it too, for a third eye. So whatever you would like to work with is gonna be just perfect for you. I'm just choosing, I really felt, you know, I've been waiting to work with this wand for such a long time and I just felt called to work with more raw pieces of stone today because this is raw from under the water in the Caribbean <laughs> but it all it's yours is going to be whatever you want it to be right and then finger width down feel where the crown chakra stone needs to go and then for me I'm going to use this Use this purple aura. It feels right. There's kind of a long, skinny little spot here that feels right. And then I have a piece of morganite, which I'm going to add as my soul star stone. Right here. Again, just putting it down, letting it settle, not forcing it to go where I want it to go, but letting it choose. Oof. And then, um, I really do want Apophyllite energy. Apophyllite is such an important stone in our mineral collection. I just have it because I was showing it to you. What did I do with it? That needs to be right there. So finger width down, it's gonna sit right in that little place of power. Let it find its place. I like that. Okay, 
Now, you can always add more later. I have other crystals where I'm like, oh, I don't know, maybe I want to add that. I have my little flowers that we had, and these little glass flowers that we had in our shop a couple of weeks ago. And part of me is like, I want to add those too. And you could, you could add those in other places. So, you know, when you're making a wand like mine, you'll notice that I went in and I added rhinestones and I added, this wand took me about a week to make and each one is a prayer tie. But you'll see that I have multiple stones for the third eye, I have multiple stones and rhinestones for the heart chakra. So when you're done adding your ribbons, you may wanna go back through and zhuzh it. <laughs> Okay, yeah, there's no, you're not gonna screw this up. You cannot screw this up. It's gonna be absolutely gorgeous and perfect in every way. So I'm gonna start with my ribbons. Now I'm a heavy ribboner. You don't have to be. And I'm gonna tell you when I'm cutting my ribbons for wands, I, um, I make everyone a different length because that's what makes it charming and beautiful. So I don't cut them until the end, okay? <laughs> Aw, Michaela, I'm so happy you're here. Okay, yeah, TMSG did a gorgeous job. And TMSG, like I said, did not add ribbons all the way along. They did something a little bit more tribal and a little bit more sparse. Mine is more kind of true to my style. And I'm showing you different styles because I want you to know there's no right or wrong way to do it. Now, if you are gonna add ribbons, what I do is place my ribbon and as I tie it, I say a prayer. And this is the root chakra. So this prayer that I'm tying right now, which is an indigenous practice, is a prayer for protection, strength, and grounding. Beautiful, right? And you can actually tie a full knot. Oops, one of my stones just came off. You can actually tie a full knot if you want. Let me put my aquamarine back on. I knew that wasn't too steady when I put it on. So let me replace that. And it's just as easy as gluing it back on. And letting it just rest. So prayer, prayer for strength, prayer for grounding, prayer for protection. Okay. Um I'm gonna go into my little ribbon stash and find something kind of sacrally, which feels like this. That's pretty, isn't it? Now the sacral chakra prayer is different. This is a prayer for creativity. This is a prayer for inspiration. If you're an artist, this is your zone. This is for you to feel inspired and encouraged, and full of passion for what you do and what you make that's completely unique to you. That's like your artistic fingerprint. Fun, right? And then I will tell you what ultimately I like to do with my wands, just to show you and inspire you. Again, this is one that's old, this one I'm showing you here. If you hang them on a table, let me get back on my camera. If you hang them on a table, if you set them on a table with the ribbons hanging down, which is how this is at the entrance to my altar, this is where that lives, the ribbons hang down over the table and it's super pretty. It's like art. So that's why you don't want to cut your ribbons too short. You kind of want to let your, and see how they're all different lengths? It's not perfect. Some are long and some are short. Some ribbons I didn't have long pieces and that's okay because it's exactly as it's meant to be. Now I'm gonna go in and find something kind of gold for my solar plexus. And I'm feeling like I kind of want two ribbons for this chakra. So I'm gonna choose this one and I'm gonna choose, what else feels good? Oh, and 
I forgot I wanted to add my mom's my mom's shirt. My mom was such an artist and such a creative. So I'm gonna tie my mom's shirt piece on here. My mom passed away in August of last year. So this is for you, mom. You taught me everything I know about being an artist. And I'm so thankful to you. Thank you for inspiring me. And see, it's just a little piece, but now my mom is here and she's part of that craft too. And she was, my mom was an amazing artist. She didn't paint, but anything she touched, she was so good at it the first time. She would take me to crafting classes and everybody would end up going, ooh, ah, when she was done, because it was like, hers was so good. <laughs> and mine was usually not quite as good, but I always put a good effort in. Oh. oh yeah if you go to my um, Facebook page my personal Facebook page and you look through my profile pictures there's a picture of me and her my favorite picture of me and her is there my sweet mama she came to me in my dream last night she did she sang to me and she was so young in the dream I have a picture of her in her 20s and um, she hasn't come to me that much since she passed away but she did come to me last night. And it was super beautiful. I don't want to cry, but it was really lovely. So here's a little short gold ribbon, but I just love it so much. It's the only piece I have. So I'm going to tie that one on. Now the golden ribbons have a different prayer, right? The golden ribbons are about you being strong. And you are strong. You're so strong. You're stronger than you know. You can do tough things. tough 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 you inspire me every day all of you do the way you go through this life sometimes when I don't feel very strong I think of some of you um, and how tough you are how you go through tough medical things and you go through tough emotional things and you you keep on keeping on because your spirit is so resilient and I think of you and I now, if she can do that, if they can do that, I've got this. Right? Well, it is. It's, it's a pride flag order because the pride flag is in chakra order. <laughs> so you can see I've got little ties and I've got long ties too. Now this one I am going to cut just because it's going to get in the way. So that's your strength tie. I'm tough too. I am tough. I come from tough. I always say I come from tough old birds. The women in my line are not sissies. They are warrior women who've lived through war and famine. They have. I am. I come from tough old birds. <laughs> so I'm gonna tie. First, I'm gonna try, tie this kind of minty green one on. Your green ties are all about your heart. So this one I'm tying and I'm saying that this is for love, for heart healing, right? for knowing that we can survive the challenges of the heart with grace. And then I'm going to tie a darker green tie on too. I'm actually going to tie two more. I just have these two pieces that I just love together and they just seem to go really nicely together. So I'm going to do these two. The darker green is going to be for healing. Yeah. And again, use whatever you have, right? Um, a lot of this is just like, you know, leftover, like I said, from from gift wrapping and just I don't throw craft supplies away even when I'm done gift wrapping at Christmas time if there's leftover ribbon I just throw it in my crafting bin and it ends up coming in handy so this tie I'm making for health and healing to be a prayer for my own health and healing and also to be a prayer for my community's health and healing so this is for you too I'm tying this for you that this whole year and into the future you will have good health, strong health, and overcome any health challenges that you face. There we go. 
Look, it's coming together. And again, if any of them are crazy long, you can trim those. But it's don't trim it like you're trimming hair. Just let it let it be. <laughs> oh, interesting. I didn't know that it was a carpenter beetle. Yeah, because I took it from the water. Isn't that cool? I didn't know that. Thank you so much for letting me know, Kristen Galloway. This is why I love it. I learn things from you guys all the time. Now I have something fun to research when we're done, which is really cool. Okay, so we're almost there. So now I'm gonna find a beautiful light blue ribbon. I pulled this one out earlier because I thought it was really pretty. And then I also have, what else did I have? Actually, this one is really pretty. I'm gonna do this one here. So this next tie over here is for authenticity because that's your throat chakra. So this is a tie for truth, for authenticity. I'm gonna add this one too, there. I'm gonna tie both of those. Truth, authenticity, and I always tie them one at a time. So I'm gonna bring it over here. Let me move this so you can see. Because even if you're not making one right now, it'd be lovely to have you set an intention with me. I'd love to have your energy here. So may we always find our pathway to truth and feel courageously authentic. Always be courageous enough to speak the truth to ourselves and to each other. It's coming together, don't you think? And what's interesting is like it's even though it's similar to the styles I always make, it's so different from this one in its own way. You know, the wood is different, the angle is different, the intentions are different. So you can feel the energy in your wand as you make it, no matter how, how many times you make them. And if you're an artist and you have an Etsy shop, what a beautiful offering to make and sell. I used to sell my wands. I don't make enough of them anymore to sell, um, but uh, you could. And what a blessing to give to someone, right? Something made with your hands and your heart. There's no, you can't put a price on that. It's just precious when we do those things. Okay, I'm looking for indigo blue. Do, do, do. a proper turquoise really yet. So I think I'm going to tie a proper um, turquoise here and a proper indigo here. So here our prayers are, again, the, um, the teal blue I'm doing for our truth. Inner truth, outer truth, alignment with what is true and accurate. All things being known, all things being seen. And then with the indigo, as I go in that direction, my inner vision, Learning how to trust it, follow it, appreciate it. Yeah. 
Now I'm going to go in with my purple. This was from our tools that we sent you. We sent you a really beautiful piece of proper purple. And I'm going to go in with this one after, which is kind of a kind of a hybrid. And then I saved this one, which is kind of a salmon. And then I have this little cutie here that I thought I would tie at the end here. And that one, kind of showing you where I'm headed. And then as I get to the end here, I have this really pretty piece of beaded ribbon from a hat maker friend who sends me some of her de stash stuff sometimes. It's all kind of patterned and pretty. So I'm gonna come over here with you and at the crown chakra, right here, we're going to tie right here for faith my mom's middle name. For faith, for trust in our spirit guides, for accepting their wisdom and following it when we can. Here at the soul star, which is pink, this is about connecting with our angels and spirit guides and higher self. I'm putting two there because it takes more angels than normal to help me. <laughs> My poor angels, sometimes I think they're really tired. It's hard probably being my angel. Um, I'm super grateful that they are so patient with me. <laughs> and then, um, then my little beaded ribbon here, which is going to represent the dimensions above the soul star. So all of the higher dimensional gateways. <laughs> okay, and then there's lots of other things you can do. Um, if you have some, you know, we have this little silver and gold, and uh, we also had green like this, which I feel like what I want to do is... tie this at the end. So wait for it. I've got a plan. Hold on. This is to represent my relationship to Gaia, Mother Earth, and the plant devas of the forests and the fairies and the enchanted lands. All the little beings that are too small for us to see. And also to my spirit guide, which is Hummingbird. Can I get it? The Colibri. The Hummingbird is my spirit guide. I guess I didn't want to tie that kind of long. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to let that kind of hang. to wrap this end. I'm going to glue it down. I totally feel like my mom right now. More, more is more. That was her mantra. <laughs> and I'm going to just kind of let that hang down. And then I'm imagining I'll probably add a few more crystals along as I go. But I think for today and for our purposes, this is really good. It's right where it needs to be. Now, when you know for sure you have your ribbons where you want them, um, what I like to do is come in and knot them. So I know for sure this is the one I want here. So I'm going to tie it a second knot just to really seal it. I think 
you, and this is my prayer for strength. I know for sure I want this one here. And this is my prayer for creativity. It's very emotional, Deanna Franco, because this is a commitment to you that you're making, to your strength, to your beauty. I know I want you here, Mom, so I'm gonna tie your shirt in a double knot. <laughs> Always want you with me. I know for sure I want this little golden ribbon here. This is my prayer for strength. And this one is also a prayer for strength, confidence, courage, like the lion. This is my prayer from my heart to stay true to it, listen for its voice. These were my prayers for healing for you and for me. You know, we want those here. May you be well and strong in your body, in your mind, in your spirit. Use your breath. I know I want this one here for truth. May I always find the truth. May the truth find me. May I always be brave enough to hear it and speak it. May I always be authentic and true to myself and the core of who I am. The world will try to change you. You can't let it do that. Don't let the world get its hands on you. This is my prayer for wisdom. Gotta have wisdom, says the goddess of wisdom. <laughs> this is my prayer for faith. Holy shit, in these days, do we need faith? May faith guide our actions and our choices and our decisions always. Don't lose faith. Don't let the world get its hands on you and don't lose your faith. Sometimes in the forest, it'll be all you have. go and down here oh spirit guides higher self let me always hear your voice speak through the confusion angels walk with me hold my hand and spirits in the higher dimensions I will always trust your guidance and to those in the enchanted realms and the forests, plant spirits, Madre Ayahuasca, I will always follow your wisdom and trust it above the wisdom of humans. space for Zoe to work on it too because she's in with her tutor right now so she's got finals coming up so crafting doesn't come before finals finals comes before crafting but I do want her to feel like she can add her own little touch to this because I love that she started to co-create this with me and so here's where we are darlings in our staff's power wisdom and truth what is power, right, if it isn't wisdom and truth? <laughs> what is power? Right? For me, power is not about controlling anything or anyone. It's actually the opposite. For me, power is about learning to let go and trust the process. That's real power. Power where you have to control somebody isn't really power. That's fear. People who have real power don't want to control anybody. That's when you know it's real. Okay, so how you feeling? <laughs> right?
me your wand. <laughs> Bless you. In all ways, for all your days, may it remind you of the energy of this moment, your strength and your intention and your purpose, your focus and your gifts. May it carry you. <laughs> right? May it carry you through the lightest and the darkest of days as a reminder that you are never alone. And together we say, Amen, Aho. And so it is. Amen, Aho. And so it is. So, um, what I would like to ask, you know me, I love a good contest. <laughs> um, and if I do this, I know you're going to post pictures because I want to see your wands. Would you please, I'm going to ask you to do this before Friday. Would you please work on your wand, post a picture of it before Friday. Team SG and I are going to go through and choose. Let's choose however many you want. Let's choose half a dozen. And it's not about like how pretty it is or how perfect it is. It's about feeling the energy of it. And we're going to send you a prize. Um, I'm going to go through my collection and um, Team SG will choose other prizes too. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to go through my stones and ribbons, if this sounds good to you. And I'm going to choose six stones and six ribbons from my little stash of magic. Um, and that way, if you want, you can add what I send you if you're one of the six and add my intention and my ribbon to your wand um, or you can make another wand and use what I send you as part of that but um, I have some pretty magical little crystals and ribbons in my collection like I said things from hat makers and friends who have little special things that they send me once in a while so the birds are chirping they agree so I'm going to make six little prizes for you guys and then Team SG will add other little tumbled stones and you know points and things like that and we'll send some gift bags to the six winners so you have till Friday today's Tuesday you have all day today and tonight you have Wednesday day and night Thursday day and night let's say please post by the end of the day on Friday and then on Monday team SG and I Alexis Karen and I will get together and say here's my six and then we will choose prizes and send them. We'll announce the six and um, we'll send you prizes. And so when you post, would you do me a favor, post a picture of your wand and it, I would love to know just me personally because I geek out on this stuff. What was your intention? Why did you choose the stones you chose? What was your intention as you were placing it or wrapping it? Um, what are you going to use your wand for? Like I kind of want to know the whole story. So take as long as you want and this is on the event page. Yeah, so um, Karen, if you wouldn't mind posting the link. Monday's a holiday, but um, we're working because it's um, new moon. <laughs> so Team SG and I will be looking. Oh, you're gonna do it on main page on Facebook? Okay, let's do that. So what I will do, hey Karen, what do you think? You want me to take a picture of my wand and post it? Is that the easiest way to do it? Why don't I do that, Karen, unless you tell me otherwise. I'll take a picture of my wand right now when we're done. I'll post a picture of mine with a link to this YouTube recording, right? And then you guys post yours. Are they able to post pictures in their comments, Karen, on, on our main Facebook page? If that works, and then on Monday, which is a holiday but not for us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so before new moon, We'll go through, we'll choose six, and we'll announce it. Okay, I'll, I'll take a picture of mine. Um, did you have fun with me? I hope you did. And thank you so much to Team SG for being there, too. So um, a couple of things to tell you before we sign off for tonight. And again, thank you for being there and for being um, as magical as you are. There's nobody I'd rather craft with. A um, couple things. So make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel because that way you won't miss the new moon ceremony that's coming up on Monday. And uh, we would love to see you there. I think you probably can post a video clip. I would love to see a video clip. 
if you're willing to do a little video, I'm there all day long for that. Love that. So show me all the things. New moon on Monday. <laughs> Always have to sing the song. Um, and then um, we, I am leading a two-day online retreat in June. Did you know? I am. Called Reimagine. It's two full days with me and uh, Tara, who's my lead astrologer, and Alexis, and my friend Yasmina, who's a model, and is reimagining her life as we speak. Um, there's only 20% of our spots left. 80% of the spots have been taken. So no pressure if you don't want to join, but if you would like to join us, you can go to sagegoddess.com slash reimagine, this link right here, and um, join us for two days on a weekend, which is pretty fun. And it's all recorded, so you can join us live. It'll be live, but if you have to miss it for any reason, or if you're like me and you've got baseball and stuff like that, <laughs> uh, you can always go back and watch the recording. So if you haven't signed up yet and you were waiting, I wouldn't wait too much longer because we are limiting the enrollment. And like I said, it's 80, 82% sold out. So if you want one of the last seats, I wouldn't wait till the weekend. I would register this week. And so sagegoddess.com slash reimagine. It's the 25th and 26th. And just so you know, this is the agenda. I'm really excited. You get this journal too when you sign up. But this is the agenda. So we're doing, I'm leading you through a sound bath. Then we're doing, um, on Saturday is my session with Yasmina on how to reimagine your life and work with your energetic frequency. I'm teaching all new content I've never taught before. Um, then we're doing a North Node astrology workshop to help you understand your purpose because your North Node is your purpose. It's why you're here on the planet. And then teach you what that means. Then it's tea time and hangout time with me in the afternoons, both days. So it's almost four hours of just, hey, want to chat? Ask me questions. Then on Sunday morning, I'm leading you through a breathwork journey. And I'm teaching you how to work with your dream state for redesigning your life. Then we're talking about a deep dive into desire, how to resource what you need. We're doing an elemental ceremony and then more tea time and hangout time. So yeah, I have been spending the last six months preparing the content for this retreat. I just sat down last night and started writing out my notes for it. I've got close to like 18 pages of notes of stuff I've never talked about or taught before. So even if you've been my student for a decade, a lot of stuff we're gonna talk about isn't anything we've ever touched on before. But I've been going through this process for the last year myself. I've got a lot to say on the topic of reimagining your life. So if you want to hear my thoughts on that and join us for all that fun stuff. This is going to be on YouTube, Jamie. Yeah, it's on YouTube. And like I said, it's all recorded. So if you can be there live, that's awesome. I'm doing it on a weekend because I know it's easier for folks. But if you have to miss it for any reason, you can always go back and watch it later, too. So enjoy. All right, that's all I have for you. In half an hour from now, I'm doing live crystal readings for my Crystal master students in our Facebook group. What are you doing at 5 p.m. Pacific time? So go make some tea. I'm gonna go refresh my energy drink. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was super fun to make our, our magic wands with you. So I'm gonna take a picture of this right this very minute. I'm gonna put it on our main Facebook page. You go over there when you're done, post a picture of yours, tell me the story, and we'll send you some goodies to help you finish decorating. And then uh, Crystal Masters, I'll see you at five o'clock. Um, I do teach a class in crystal healing called Crystal Masters. You can join anytime. That link is sagegoddess.com slash programs to join our online programs. Because some people are like, I didn't know you taught classes. I sure do. And today is their live reading day. It's an hour of me just pulling crystals for them and telling them what it means for them. So it's one of my favorite times of the month. I know you guys look forward to it as well. So we'll see you soon. All right, cheers, you guys. See you over there at five. And if you aren't able to join us for any reason, thank you for being here. I really hope you had a good time. And, um, and I'll see you soon. Take care. Have a great rest of your evening.